guys. Hey guys. So we're on our way down to LA right now to take a styles with casting for Carter's. We had the opportunity last Christmas to do a Carter's ad, our whole family, minus Ella, but that's a whole story. We'll get into that <laughs> later. We'll share a little bit more about our journey with Estelle's modeling career and how we got into it and kind of what it's all about. So come along with us today on this little journey to LA for this casting and hear a little bit more about why representation is so important, especially for Estelle. But before we get into it guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the post notifications so that you can catch all of our videos. And to wish us still luck, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, you guys. Thumbs up. All right, let's go to a casting. When our daughter was born, she surprised us with her Down syndrome diagnosis. And at that time, we had no idea what our lives would look like. But we quickly discovered extra needs bring extra joy. Through the good times and the challenges. And the adventure and the routine. We're learning to live this life to the fullest. With, with a, a little extra. extra. stressed out. Try not to be stressed out. I really like when I get these auditions and everything, I my mind instantly goes to like the logistics of it all, but then I have to remind myself, okay, we're just we're not gonna worry about it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If it does, then great, but I'm not gonna stress. She's supposed to be there in like 15 minutes. GPS is saying like 10 minutes, so hopefully that's hopefully correct. That's correct. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood you guys. Magic Castle's right here. So Jill and I were lucky enough to get invited to go to the Magic Castle. You have to know a member in order to get in. Specific dress code, you have to wear a coat. There's a bunch of magicians cruising around and doing tricks. If you guys don't know what the Magic Castle is, check it out, it's really neat. If you ever get a chance to go, say yes. There's Jim Henson Company. So, in true Estelle fashion, she did not nap on the way down here. I'm just hoping that she's got enough energy left to like go in there and be herself. They're either gonna love her and they're gonna be grateful that they cast her because she's amazing or their loss, you know? Their loss in our fun excursion to LA. Yeah. I think too, going into castings, you kind of have to go in you have to be confident, but at the same time, you have to kind of go in with the idea of like, she's probably not gonna get it, but let's go and do our best. Because then when you do get the job, you're like, whoa, sweet, we did it, you know, we got the job. And the more castings we do and the experiences we have, the more that I learn that you just gotta be yourself. You just gotta be true to who you are, have the confidence, like Devin is saying, which Estelle does not like her confidence. That oh, is no. not a problem for her. <laughs> but if she has a bad day, doesn't get a nap or whatever, and she just doesn't do it, they're expecting her to do, then oh well. Yeah, not there'll, the end of the world. There'll be another one coming around shortly. Hey Estelle, are you ready? Hello. All right, we found a spot right in front of the venue, wherever, I don't even know what this place is, but. The studio. Studio. So I should have just changed her before we left the house, but I didn't, and she was like in play clothes, well, and of course you want clean clothes for an audition, so I gotta yeah. just change her really quick and then run her in there. Oh man. Um, Ness and me, this one. You're yeah. going? For you? Yeah. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they literally left like not even 10 minutes ago, huh, Clifford? How many minutes would you say? Like, like five. And they're already on their way back. They're walking back up right now. We saw a bunch of famous people. Uh, yeah, we saw so many famous people, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, like, uh, no, we didn't see any famous people. Really? Here they are! Here they come! Estelle looks tired, maybe sad. I don't know what she looks. Hey. She's sad because it was so fast. What went down? It was just quick. Did you see the other little girl with Down syndrome walk Yeah, by? that's Adeline. Oh. I follow her mom on social media. I oh, said cool. hi to her. There was like three girls with Down syndrome, so they're clearly going for something. Yeah, here. okay. But... Yeah, how'd she do? She was good. She was a little shy, but she was good. Cool. But a little shy. Yeah. Um, saw, like, famous I think people. she just uh, wanted to keep doing it. Oh, you know I mean? like, yeah. 
You're just like, I want to play with toys. She's used to, like, doing a shoot. Doing a shoot, yeah. It was just an audition today, it's baby. An audition. But you did such a good job. So I think she's just a little, like, yeah. that was really fast. I hyped her up a little too much, I think. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, that was the fastest casting I think I've ever done. I think so. Usually the the casting themselves is like really oh. short like that, like just a second, but you usually are waiting for a while. This was like in, filled out a little paperwork, and then they like measured her, called her back, and she was done. She was done in what, 10 minutes? It was like less than 10 minutes, yeah. I'm serious. Like, From like leaving the car to getting back to the car was like 10, it was so fast. So I think that's what threw her a little bit is because she was expecting a little bit more of a, yeah. a thing, yeah, and it was so it. quick. But she wanted her, her all day shoot being treated like a superstar. Yeah. Anyway, so let's get in your seat. I, I have to run to Target, so let's do that. Let's go to Target and just. Are we going to Hollywood Target? Oh, I don't know about that. I feel like let's get away from the LA traffic yeah. before it gets any later. Yeah, let's head toward home. Okay. And then we'll get into some more of the fun about modeling and stuff. We'll kind of share some of Estelle's experiences and some just kind of talk. Our experiences? Some of our experiences and just talk to you guys a little bit more of that. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. Have a snack? Yeah, I caught you a snack. Are you gonna sit up here now, bud? Yeah. You don't want to sit all the way in the back by yourself? Yeah. You're welcome. Take your pacifier out if you want to talk. No. Oh, here. Oh, you want it back in, you're tired. Are you gonna take a nap on the way home? Maybe. All right, back in that LA traffic. Stop such a good time, me. guys. It's such a good time. Is that a fire? Uh, it's some kind of fire. That's a fire. I don't There's a fire. I don't know what it would be from. Maybe. By the fire. traffic and having to pick up Ella from dance so what better way to kill time than Walmart? Walmart's always a good time. Walmart's always a good time. Well let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> yeah let's spin that back. A nice Walmart is always a good time. Yes. We don't have a nice Walmart where we live so this is a little farther out. It's in between LA and home but it was fun to stop there and kill some time. Yeah anyway we're gonna head back now and pick up Ella but I just wanted to have a little chat on our drive here about Estelle's modeling career, kind of how it got started and what it's all about. So I think I've shared a little bit before here, but essentially what happened is on our Instagram account, we had someone reach out to us and there was an agency that was starting a diversity division. We were able to submit some photos of her and, and go through the process of signing up with them when she was really little. She might have been less than a year, but if she was a year, she was like just a year. Yeah. And then it seemed like right away she got a job. She worked for Munchkin. Unfortunately, I never saw those photos. She did the job, did the photo shoot. It was kind of a nightmare. I didn't know what to expect, but I know now to expect that they don't care if you have a baby. They'll just expect you to sit on set for hours until they're ready for you. And it doesn't matter if it's if you pass nap time or if they're hungry or anything like that. Like that's not the way the industry works. The industry works like we are ready for you, you better be ready. So I just remember like specifically timing out her nap so that when she got to her call time, she would be like rested and fed and everything. And then we sat there for hours waiting for them. And then it was really weird when they took her to set, they kind of just took her from me and took her to set. And she was like, what is going on? And then they finally came and got me and they're like, oh no, you can go in there with her. Which I have now learned that you always can be present with your child. They should never take your child out of your sight. But it's it, actually a law. It's actually a law. <laughs> so uh, we've learned that now, live and learn. But that first experience, they just it seemed like the director or whatever, she didn't know how to work with children. So I don't know if they just never used the photos or if we just never saw them, but I don't have any documentation from that first shoot. Then she did a photo shoot for, what was the next thing she Infantino. did? Infantino. 
that was fun experience too. That was down in San Diego. And we that kind was of, neat for all of us. Kind of a last minute, we found out the night before that she booked it, and so we went the night before, we stayed at a hotel down there, kind of made a trip of it. It was really fun for all of us. It was a great experience for the whole family. The director of that shoot, again, didn't seem like she knew how to deal with babies, which is funny because it's a baby company, but she just, it was for a carrier. And again, they just like yanked her out, put her in the carrier, and she was good for like a second, and then it was just like too much too soon, and she was like, what's going on? So they probably shot her for maybe 10 minutes, because she was crying at that point. And so I was like, okay, they're for sure not gonna use anything, this is our second experience, and so I'm like, they're definitely not gonna use these shots, because they got way better stuff, I thought, at the Munchkin shoot that I never saw anything for, so for this, I was like, that was a bust, for sure. Turns out later that they actually did use one of the shots, and so I have a screenshot, I can share that. I'll, I'll share some pictures of the work that we do have. Um, so the Infantino was the first job that she did that we actually got to see the product. And it was probably the only picture they got of her, right? I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was the only photo they got, but to be fair, all the babies were freaking out. It was like every time they put the baby in the carrier, they would just scream and freak out. So, like I said, I just felt like there wasn't, a, there needed to just be like a soothing, gentle approach to it. And it was just like, grab the baby, throw him in the carrier. And they're like, you're not my mom. Like, it was a whole thing. So, after that, we didn't do anything for a little while. We went to a few auditions and stuff, some castings, but didn't really hear much for a little bit. And then fast forward to next year and when COVID kind of shut everything down, they started doing more like families, like real families and all that because they could, you know, do stuff together. And so they actually cast our whole family for the Carter's ad and that was a really cool experience for us. And bonus, because of everything being shut down, they hired Devin as the photographer. So he got to not only model in it, but photograph it. How, you ask? Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Didn't we make a video about how we do that? Did we? I think we did. If we did, I'll find it. Last and Christmas. And I'll put it up. Oh, I thought you meant uh, the Carter's ad. Not the Carter's ad, but how we shoot our family. Oh, yeah, yeah. So just a little remote control. Yeah. <laughs> So unfortunately when they sent us all the samples and all the props and all the clothes and everything they wanted us to do for the shoot, they didn't have any samples in Ella's size at the time. So she wasn't able to be in the photos and that was a really big bummer for her, but she became like our little set director. So that was, we included her in the project and it was still cool and it was really neat to see our family in the Carter's ad last Christmas. And Ella got paid. Yes, Ella still got paid because it was like for our family. So they paid each of us. So she still got paid even though she wasn't in it, so that was cool. And then after that, Estelle got to do, pretty quickly after that actually, she had an audition and booked the American Girl doll job, which was by far my favorite experience on set was American Girl. And anytime they want to call Estelle and have her come and model for them, like we will be there because that set felt like we've done this before. We've worked with kids, we've worked with babies, we know what we're doing. It just was so chill, such a nice environment, but everyone was so nice, so welcoming, so warm and inviting. When it came time for Estelle, it was literally like, okay Estelle, you're gonna play with the dolls. It wasn't like, here, hold the doll, let me take your picture. It was like, just play, just play with the dolls. And they had like all the stuff set up for her and she was in heaven. I wish so much that I would have videoed that entire thing, but I'm so weird about that still, guys. I don't know if you're allowed to take on set videos. Sometimes we've been told specifically you can't. Other times I'm just scared and I just don't. But maybe as we get more comfortable, I'll feel bolder about that. But, and a lot of times like at the shoot specifically, they don't want you taking photos and videos because they don't want anyone seeing like what their what the campaign is going to be ahead of time. But I honestly wish that I could have just said, can I video, I won't share it, it's so precious. And I was in heaven, I was texting Devin, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And they just took so many photos, so we've been lucky enough to see quite a few of the photos from that shoot in various ways they've used them and they even put together like a little video and so I'll try to share some snippets of that as well. Um, side note, here's something interesting and, and strange. I've now had multiple people tag me in catalogs that they've gotten at their house with the photos from the photo shoot that Estelle did for American Girl. 
at the same time we will get a catalog like the same day and her photo's not in it. So it's clear that they're making multiple versions of their catalogs and for whatever reason we just keep getting the one that doesn't have a style in it. So strange, but hey, here's the thing that you guys can do for me. If anyone out there gets a catalog an American Girl mailer or whatever that has a photo of Estelle in it, would you get in contact with me and I will pay you to send it to me. I will pay you when you're done with it to send it to me because I would love to have an American Girl doll catalog with Estelle's picture in it. All the ones we have, she hasn't been in it. It's so strange. So let me know. You can contact me on Instagram or email and get in touch with me. Let's connect. I will pay you to send it to us. I would love to have it and I would appreciate it so much if you would help us. And so then, fast forward to the last shoot she did was the biggest production that she's done so far and it was really, really epic. We were actually in Arizona at the time. We were driving through the Petrified Forest and we got the call that she booked the job and we were like, what? Like she booked Amazing. a Nike ad? So that was super awesome. So. We did sneak a couple videos and pictures and I will post all of that. I don't even know how to get into that experience. I feel that's like that's a, a whole, that's a whole separate vlog. Story. That was so much fun. It was the best experience ever. We got to go down and do a fitting and then we showed up for on set for the day. It was a full on production. They had a street in smack dab in the middle of downtown LA shut down for the set. There was probably 30 more, 30 or more I would say 30. models. So our call time was probably two hours before they were actually ready for her on set. And so she was kind of getting overwhelmed with the amount of people that kept coming up and saying, oh hi, oh hi, you know, and like, so I had this feeling when it was time to shoot, they were like, okay, we're ready for you. I was like, she's not gonna go. Like, not only is she tired and it's been a long day already, but you're talking like go out into the middle of the street with 30 strangers and listen to the director who you've met one other time at the fitting. Um, and so I wasn't feeling very confident, but then this amazing PA came over and she just became Estelle's best friend. And she helped Estelle like know where to stand and she would give her water between takes and it was the sweetest, cutest thing. It was and so cute. even afterwards she came up and she was like, oh, I love her. And it was a- uh, Estelle still, still talks about her. Yes, because when we were leaving the set, we had given all the wardrobe back and stuff and her name was Candy and we were leaving the set and she came running out and she's like, oh, Estelle actually gets to keep her sweater and her shoes. Like, that was really awesome. That's the first time she ever like got swag um, from the set. And so whenever she wears her Nikes or her sweater, she'll say, Candy gave me these shoes or Candy gave me my sweater. Yeah. Like she still talks about her and I know that that was such a memorable thing for her. Yeah. Um, and then the other model was like her onset mom and she was walking across the street with Estelle and pushing a stroller with a dog in it. By the time the shoot was over, Estelle was just like eating it up. Everyone was like, Estelle! And she was waving at him and it was the best. I literally almost cried. It was awesome. Yeah. So they shot for probably two hours of the whole group, the whole set. And they would just like walk across the street, they would take a bunch of photos and then they would get to the end of the street and they'd say, okay, reset they'd all go back to their spots and then they would shoot it again. They would say action and they hit it and then they would come again. They would walk across the street. So it was literally two hours of this, just back and forth. And Estelle was so professional about it. I, she she never once point. came over and came over and found me. I was standing there the whole time, kind of out of her vision, but I could see her the whole time. She never asked for me. She never came and looked for us. She never ran off set. She never needed anything. She was just awesome. Estelle was just like on it reset and she'd walk, Candy would come and grab her, she'd give Candy a big hug and she'd carry her back to her spot and she'd do it again and it was the cutest thing. So towards the end of the session, I went and I was standing over by closer to the photographer and they were all like waving at her to get her to look over and I literally stood there like almost crying because just the joy, the genuine joy on all of their faces as they called out her name and then her lighting up and waving, it was just the sweetest, cutest scene ever and lighting is really bad. It's there getting dark all of a sudden. Let's get some better lighting. Okay, back to the story. So it was honestly just the most genuinely heartwarming scene where they were all like they were all falling in love with her. And I think that's what's so amazing about this new kind of era of representation in the media. It's not only the fact that our kids 
and other kids with different disabilities and different diagnoses are seeing themselves now in the mainstream media, but it's also about the impact that it's having like in the industry because now you have these individuals, kids with Down syndrome or whatever it is, on sets. Mm -hmm. And you have all these models and these actors and everything who are now having these experiences working with somebody with a disability, working with somebody with Down syndrome. And it, you could see it. You could see the way she like was warming their heart just by walking across the set and waving at them. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I was standing there and it moved me. And I wish I had videoed that moment, but I was so in it and it was so beautiful. And so, unfortunately, with that ad, when it finally came out, like you could barely see her in it. It's such a big, cool shot, and I'll post it anyway. On their website, like on your phone, they actually have a spot where it's zoomed in and you can kind of see her a little better, but if you didn't know it was her, you'd never know it was her. Her, face, her hand's kind of up her in her hand's face. Kind of in her, yeah. The one that they used was the one take that the that the other model was carrying her. So all the other takes, Estelle was walking, holding her hand. But that take was the one that she held her and Estelle kind of had her hand in her mouth. And I don't know if you would have been able to see her better if she was walking or not, but maybe you couldn't see her at all in the takes when she was walking. And so that's why they used one where she, where she was picked up. But we were kind of bummed because I was like, ah, oh, they got so many shots. And I know there was better ones of her, but it was still such an awesome experience. I'll never forget that day. That was the best day. It was so cool and such a glimpse of like possibilities. Like maybe she'll do more stuff like that, you know? Yeah. We'll see you guys, we'll see. So if you're looking to cast an adorable little four-year-old, give us a call guys, yeah. give us a call. We do have an agent, you can go through them if you want to be professional or you can just come to us directly, you know? Shout we out. We don't know all the rules yet. <laughs> shout out to Nike too. Yes, shout out to Nike for casting her and just everyone on that set was amazing amazing that set everyone was so nice yeah above and beyond awesome. nice and real there were a lot of them were from new york so it was like this high fashion athletic wear mashup it was such an awesome experience the stylist was the nicest guy yeah everyone was super super kind and, and just genuine and an amazing experience an amazing day yeah. the best day and we're ready for more of it we're ready yeah. for more so We'll see what happens with this Carter's ad. If not this one, there will be more. And like we touched on here, and I'll post our last video that we talked about representation, like it really is so important. It really is so important for people with disabilities to be included in that diversity conversation. Mm -hmm. For people with disabilities to be represented in mainstream ads like Nike, with big companies like Carter's. And it's important, you guys, it matters. It makes a difference and so, Keep supporting companies that are paving the way with this representation and if you are in any way in the industry, cast actors and models with Down syndrome and other disabilities and help create a more inclusive advertising world, you know? So that's what we're about. That's what we're for. Yep. It's a really neat time, guys. And it's really cool to be part of it in our small little way. So. Yep. That's why we make the drives out to LA. We feel like since we are able to do it, we will do it because if she can be the face that speaks hope to someone else, then that's amazing to be a part of that. So we're here for it, guys. Yeah, that's right. my saga. Anything to add? I think you covered it. I mean, honestly, it's been such an interesting experience so far and we're, we're just hungry for more experiences like that. I think we get so excited about these times that we've had and, and it's it gives us so much hope for the future and we're ready we're ready guys let's do we're it we're ready we're ready anyway we hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us in this little casting adventure we'll let you guys know what happens one way or the other we'll bring you along next time if you guys enjoyed this go ahead and give it a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the post notification so that you can catch all of our videos See you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.